Hi, so Chris Doe had created a couple postings where he does a, I'll just play a clip here. I really, really, you know, I, I'm always interested in like full disclosure, you know, because there's lots of ways to hide behind things, you know, there's lots of ways to uh, represent yourself one way. You know, I just kind of like putting it all out there. That's really the only way I know how to do it. And so this was basically embedded in a standard LinkedIn posting. And I think a lot of people, it kind of tripped them out a little bit and they were impressed by it, which is cool. But I don't think they realize quite how simple it is to create this. Um, maybe I will just go to LinkedIn here. just to kind of show it in context. Function Christo. And we'll scroll down and find, see if we can find that posting. regular posts I probably should have found this beforehand I just didn't think that the okay here we go so you scroll down to the post, somebody, it looks like he's reshared it. Okay, it was actually a future post, which of course is his company. So when you scroll down, you don't hear anything because LinkedIn auto mutes it, but you can see the sort of like the sound waves going here, the sound bars. And so that clue, it looks like just a static, you know, like that. It just looks like, okay, it's just like an animated image or something with a, a testimonial or whatever you call it, like some type of quote from this person. But if you hover over it, you can see it's actually a video file and I'll restart it with sound. I really, Same really, one. you know, I, I'm always interested in like full disclosure, you know, because there's lots of ways to hide behind things, you know, there's lots of ways to uh, course, represent like yourself with, one way. You know, I just kind of like putting it all out there. That's just really like the with any do regular it. video, I really, oh, really, you, know, I, you can, uh, maximize I'm always it interested in like full disclosure all that same yeah, because type there's of thing lots too. of ways to hide behind things you know there's lots so that's basically what was going on here i just pulled that video out if you're on linkedin and you want to extract a video what you can do is hold control and shift and press i to bring up the web inspector and then click on this thing right here to select an element on the page and then I'm going to select, let me scroll down just a little bit, make it a little clearer. I'm going to select this again, so it's highlighted. Then I'm going to click on this video image. And then down here, it goes into the HTML element, and you can see here's the link to the video. So I'm going to right click on that HTTPS link and say open in a new tab. I really, and then really. You can watch the video, or you can just right click it and say save video as, and you can save that. Don't tell LinkedIn about that trick. Okay. So that's how I acquired the video, if you're curious. And then so what we're seeing is we have the sound, the sound bars down here. We have the quote. It's basically, it's a lot like a PowerPoint slide with the audio over it style thing. Um, so I'm going to try and briefly show how to accomplish a very similar thing using all free and open source tools. So the program I use is called Shotcut. Totally free, totally open source, available on the web. You can just, I think it's shotcut.org or you can just search for that word. When you start it up, it will ask you about creating a new project. I uh, personally, I'll go down to non-broadcast and pick 720 
progressive with 24 frames a second. Um, these ones, I believe, are broadcast as in like television broadcasts in particular countries, that setting, but we're probably more likely to broadcast to, uh, you know, to develop something for, to embed in social media and or on YouTube, things like that. So 720 to me is a good happy medium. It's um, standard high definition and it can scale either way you know you can step it up and kind of stretch it one or squash it down one without really any noticeable quality loss in my opinion so that's why I tend to go with that and the ratios the proper ratio for like a standard widescreen high definition type of thing and then 24 frames per second you'll notice like NTSC for especially North America and Japan is going to be um, close to 30 frames per second and PAL is going to be closer to 25 frames per second so really like if you go to a movie theater to my knowledge I'm not getting any younger but they only use 24 frames a second so that's that's what I pick it makes a slightly smaller file size and stuff burns a little bit less CPU and all that so anyway I picked this and that's what mode I choose and then if you want to uh, start an actual new project if you are using shortcut then you can do that this would be fairly similar um, in other video editors the the basic principles would be but in my opinion shortcuts just overall I mean it's not like the most feature rich video nonlinear video editor in the world but it's pretty darn good and it's really easy to just accomplish things like this in so if we go over back to this folder go up one here I've saved a still image here and we can look at it to analyze what's going on I'll go ahead and close this one out so this is another gentleman that they uh, created one of those excerpts of so we can see we have an image um, you know some type of subtitle and like a title or a name here and then the quote company and the bar and a background this actually does have a slight background here if you can see there's like a partial circle I thought it was just blue so I didn't really prepare a background image but anyway let's get to it so what we need to do first before we get crazy and shortcut is create that slide that's going to be back there. I'm just using Windows Paint. You can use something fancier, but I figured this is leaning towards the simple side. So if you don't have access to or don't feel like downloading a fancy program, then this will work. There's a program called GIMP, which um, is right here I have. And that is pretty much like a free open source equivalent of Photoshop. So if you really want to get tricky, I'd recommend that overall there's lots of options but anyway first thing we need to do is uh, resize regardless of which program you're in you need to make sure the horizontal the left to right if you don't if you have trouble remember horizontal and vertical think of horizon that horizon line like where the sun sets that's gonna be your horizontal line and we're gonna do uh, 1280 if I remember correctly I'm gonna unconstrain the ratio and then the vertical the up and down vertigo think maybe like uh, 720 here and so that's going to get us that range and then down here I can zoom out a little bit so that I can see what's going on full screen I'm just going to go ahead and go with a bucket fill for now to keep it simple you can use um, any background image any color any bucket fill any gradient whatever of course and then I'm going to come back over here open an old from my old account before it got deleted off of LinkedIn permaband because people get offended where am I going here edit which just opens it in a new notepad window and then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out on this and if we go back to our reference you can see there's a circle photo that just cuts out the shoulders and goes a little bit above the head looks like about a perfect circle there so I'll just try and match that 
or yeah there's no circle select tool in here I don't think is there there's no circle select tool or I guess there's free form I don't know if I can do a yeah I don't want to mess with that so I'll just go ahead in the fancier stuff like GIMP there's um, a circle select tool so I'll just do a similar in here I'm going to give a little bit of space up there kind of cut out the shoulders just do it like that and then in this program I can hit uh, well any of them you just hit control C to copy it or any of them in Windows right now I'll come over here and control V to paste it it's a little big so I'll go ahead and scale it down I don't think there's a way to like constrain the proportions in here so I'll just try and get it right close enough one option would be to just scale that whole image um, to scale down this whole image and dink around go back and forth with that but this is good enough for now so I like that I'll deselect it it's right there go back to the reference we need uh, some little title down here so I'll go there with the text tool pick a reasonable font That always stalls out. I must have too many fonts. Since I'm in Windows, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, Roboto, you can get that online. That's a free font to use. Um, on Mac, you might as well maybe choose Helvetica would be a good start. I'm going to go, since I'm on Windows, Sago is a pretty nice one. I'll go ahead and do Sago Semi-Bold. And I'll say... I guess yeah here we go how was the reference say here so it's podcast podcast oh not a good color change that to white come back over here podcast episode 0001 just to be goofy Okay, and then that's a little bit too big, so I'll go ahead and resize that. How about 22? Okay, and then of course you can pick a that's not the fanciest font for this circumstance, but I'm just trying to not take too much time and duplicate it. And then we need a name there. go ahead and pick well let's just goof around put on something a little better there a little bigger and then and of course you can um, get fancier and do like grid lines and stuff if you want to line everything up nice and neat okay what else are we missing here we need the quote and if you want the little logo on the top I'm gonna to skip that so for the quote it's gonna be a little bit trickier if you check out that video you can see the quote will roll in if you have no idea what you so want to do start that and no over. idea if you have no idea what so you want to do seconds for the for five lines of quote to roll in there so what we'll start out with is this I'll do um, I'll go ahead and save as and then I'll go to that folder and I'll just go ahead and save this one as untitled or maybe I should be more descriptive and save it as a uh, card 01 and then I'm done with this one so I'll close that and basically now we'll go back to shortcut so shortcut 
and then I'll go to um, this was a playlist I think and then I can just drag and drop that card 01 to right there sometimes it will take a second to actually process it will just stall out the way you can tell is you can click on on something or like hover and if it's unresponsive then just wait till you know give it 10 to 30 seconds or whatever and it should become responsive again and then you should be good and usually doesn't really stall out too much on me after that but anyway um, this cards in here I'm going to right click down here in the timeline and add a video track and then I'm going to drag and drop this into the video track there and that just takes just a second and it will go so now if we hit play we just have the still image of the video card playing at and the pixel ratio should be right because we set the video to 720p and then we also created the image at that this little preview window um, isn't always real time sometimes it has to like drop frames and stuff to kind of keep up with itself in editing mode because it's not the final render um, these recent versions of the program do pretty good though so shouldn't be too big of a deal but I am recording audio and video and stuff at the same time so that may not look quite as smooth as it will on the final export okay so there we have that and then we want to bring in that seems about the right amount of time it does a good little generic length of time there <clears throat> excuse me oh, maybe that's a little too long so what I can do is just Oh, I don't know if it'll let me squash it down. I'm not really an expert in this program. It's so long in between uses. What you can do up here, I think, is uh, I can set. There's some way in here, too, that's real simple. If you follow their tutorials, if you are using this program, you can just go to, like, Tutorials, click that. It'll take you to the web. And there's a really simple way to uh, select... It's kind of bothering me. There's a way to place. You can drag from the project. <clears throat> Bummer. I don't want to take forever trying to figure that out. So this one's going to take. It's not going to be quite as lined up. But like I said, check for the tutorials on the internet. It will show you how to really easily set the uh the endpoint, the duration, and then the endpoint for for that. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll go back over here, not to that one, to this one, and we'll add one line of that text in. That's one option, is to just do it the uh, sort of a rough way like this and say, this is the first line in my quote and then I can deselect that and say file save as and then I'll save this as card 2 and then I can do the same thing up here I can uh, Bring card two, drag and drop it into the uh, playlist, and then bump that right there, and then hit this a few times to go back if need be, and then you'll see it clicks over. This is the first line in my quote. So one thing we can do here too is make a transition by dragging this over this one. There's something weird about this. Like if I overlap them like that, I guess I have to grab the whole thing and kind of overlap it like that. That's one way to effectively shorten it too. And then you can see that creates a transition. I think it's like a dissolve or something by default. So we'll go back, hit play. And then you can see it fades in. That's a little bit too long of a fade to, you know, for getting technical, match up his thing with Christos, so I'm going to shorten that just a little bit, go back, hit play. This is the first line in my quote. Okay. 
And of course there's extra care you'll need to take if you want to make everything like exactly equal times or whatever, but this is just a rough go at it. So then I'm going to come down here and say, and this is the second line. And then we'll save this as card three. Same little song and dance right there. Bring that guy in there and line it up. And then overlap it by a little bit. And test it out. Pretty slow. Oh man, I really need to figure out those durations. Remove update set creation time. Sir, why does it have to be so counterintuitive? It's not though. Once you figure that out, how annoying! They just, oh, I can do it right there. Why wouldn't it let me do that at first? weird okay come on shrink down piece of junk it's just so goofy on the timeline down here sometimes like the way that I mean if you there is a certain behavior pattern to it and if you figure it out then it there's some logic to it But it's frustrating because you expect simplicity with this program for sure. Okay. Slightly better. Anyway, I'll go ahead and just get all the clips in there and then deal with that instead of fidgeting with it every single time. I'm just going to go ahead and do three lines and call it good so it doesn't take a day and a half. But obviously it's the same procedure, just do that for five lines or however many lines of a quote you'd have, or, you know, adapt that to your specific deal. And this will be card four. And I'm saving it as PNG. Um, you want to avoid like JPEG and lossy formats. PNG is a pretty good one. It's going to give you like the pixel for pixel without dithering and compressing and stuff. Okay, so come back over here, drag and drop. This is, of course, just the folder that I was saving to, and then I'm dragging and dropping the particular flow for this program. Just drag and drop into the playlist, and then drag from the playlist and line it up down there on the timeline. And then I'll overlap that one a little bit. And I'm going to drag this one out a little bit more, because if you notice on the original... Um, this sort of this pans out in three seconds but the clips like you know a long enough to completely read this if you have no idea what you want to do da, 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 so like maybe 10 or 20 seconds or something um, which we can come up here on the timeline and see that like there's 10 so this is probably I'm guessing what 13 18 it looks like okay so let's go ahead and start it back over and see Okay, if we can just shrink up those, all everything here. I guess I just have to over scoot it and pause a second and then it finally kicks in. So bring that way back there, grab that one, over scoot it, I'm still dragging. Uh oh, stuff's getting funky.
check what that's looking like real quick. That transition can go there. Why do we have two transitions? Uh-oh. Get what you pay for with open source program. Um, the cool thing is, is that, I'll go ahead and click close program on those. The cool thing with Shotcut is that does happen from time to time when you get goofy with the timeline especially with large files but it will probably recover it pretty close to where we're at so do you want to recover yes even though I didn't even save a project or anything oh yeah nice so now I'm gonna try and just do something a little more like that make that one a little bigger Just carefully slide each thing over, kind of like pause and breathe for a second in between each one. That's the thing that it seems to goof up on is this. Yeah, you see what just happened there? So I'm going to control Z, control Z, which is just to undo and redo. Um, it doesn't like to adjust that stuff. That's it glitches out on it. Just overlap that one. The hand thing seems to be okay. So that's something you if you're using this program you'd have to be very delicate with that portion of it. Obviously. but I think you get the general idea there. So now if we just add in the uh, the sound spectrogram or wave image, whatever, sound bars, whatever you want to call it, the trick with that, oh yeah, we need a sound file. So I'm going to right click and add an audio track, which is right here. And I grab, you can get public domain audio off the internet. Um, that was one thing. Let's go. So if you just type in like public domain voice track, then you can just go through, you know, obviously there's just tons of resources and stuff. And then another thing you can do is like, if you want images and stuff, you can do uh, like audio spectrum. It's just a random keyword, right? And then I'll go to images and I'll, for types, there's audio spectrums, but if you click on it, it's just sitting there. It's static images, just similar to like Google images and other services like that. I'm using DuckDuckGo. And uh, I can go to all types and put that on animated. And then if we click on one, give it a second to load in, you can see it's animated. So that's not going to sync with your audio per se, but that's a shortcut. If you just want to do that, um, that sort of like signals to the person like, hey, there's audio here. Like I could just grab this and superimpose it on the, the video, obviously. And that would be like one extreme shortcut if you're having trouble in your um, in your particular program figuring out how to do this next part because this part may get trickier in other programs. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, I'll actually open my little folder I had here because I grabbed some sample images and stuff. So the idea is just, I think one of the main ideas with it is to kind of cue the user that there is audio so that maybe they'll interact and engage with your post and like, unmute it right restart it things like that and get excited about it because it seems fancier so there's these are all just really generic images I don't think most of them aren't really like the epitome of an example or a good example but 
just different ways to uh, convey that idea. So this one, I mean, I don't necessarily think that this is more for, I think maybe like kind of like a medical-ish kind of idea of how things are going on. I'm trying to get that retro look, it looks like. But uh, that's just to sort of like give a rough idea of like one animation, simple animation that would convey that sense of that there's sound. Um, where do we have here? Then there was like some speakers, I think I had. And I'm using the web browser to preview the the animated images because of a lot of the viewers like Windows Junkie Viewer, at least in Windows 8.1, doesn't do animations. So that's obviously conveying the image, the idea. Let's see if there's one more. So like speakers. I think is another way to do it. And of course, and you would just put this in like the corner of your thing or whatever. So that's a way to kind of like a work around if you don't have a similar filter and you don't want to use this editor, this video editor. So what we can do is I'll go ahead and load in, put this back over to the playlist, come over here grab the audio and drag it into the playlist and then add this down here to this audio track okay I'm not gonna do that just it looks like it's trying to mess it's using come on <laughs> what a piece of junk this they could really if they spend any time on features it'd be nice if they fix the uh, handling of that timeline Okay, and then if I play it... Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording and by Sam... As you can see, the audio goes way past, so what I'll do is I'll try and line it up with the end right there, and then I'll split it playhead which I can just hit the S key, but I'll click that. And then that divides those two chunks. Here, I'll come over here so you can see it. And now it will still play continuously, it should. LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox. But I can right click on this one that's, you know, you can select them and they turn a red outline. So I'll click that one and right click on it and just say remove. So now they're lined up evenly and then it should just be the end of the video. Find out how you can volunteer, please visit. Okay, so that's that. And that would obviously be whatever speech lines up with your quote if you're wanting to do it just like the future had had done it. You can also go back here and hit that a few times. Okay, so where are we at now? Chapter 1 we just need of the, the Epistle wave. to the Hebrews, American okay. Standard. So what I'll do now is down here, there's filters. You can also access it up here. I'm going to say filters. Okay, I need to select the audio track with the hand. And then now you can see this plus is enabled. I'm on filter still. And I'm going to add a filter. Actually, it's under video. And then there's either audio spectrum or audio waveform. So waveform is going to be the jaggy looking stuff like you see down here in the in the sample preview thing. Uh, spectrum is the other stuff. We can check them both out. I think thought there was a way to double click on that. Anyway, okay. So if we hit play and see where we're at here. Chapter one of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. Nothing. So one of the first things to do here is the thickness of this line here. It's always, it defaults to one pixel and probably want to get it up to maybe double digits. This is a LibriVox recording. And we're still not seeing it, so 
one of the uh, the reasons for not seeing it could be that this audio track is below. Oops. Huh. That just pushed it into the... I better not get too far ahead of myself here. All LibriVox recordings are so in the public that. domain. Pause. Um, I'm going to undo those those moves there. So I think there's a way to push this down by just like right clicking on it. Insert move mix. We need to get this audio track. So right now I'm selected on this little section over here. And I'm going to try and click and drag. Doesn't seem to want to do it. So I'm going to click on this one. Click and drag. Come on. Oh, here we go. Rewrite clip on the current track. You cannot add... Once again, really easy stuff. If so, what does this do? Remove cut. You've got to be kidding me. Go here, right click, add, insert, remove. Wonder if I click on this one and do an insert audio track. See, that inserted a video track, which is not what I want. Maybe that gave me enough buffer here to drag that up. Click that. Drag it up here. Okay, what I did there is I drug it all the way up to there. Oh, how ridiculous. Okay, I'm going to um, add audio track. Where'd that add? To the bottom, huh? Dumb. So remove track. This should probably still work. Come down here. Got to be real careful about the selection. Right click. Remove track. And then we can, <laughs> these aren't even lined up anymore. How ridiculous. Oh, there we go. That's why it looks goofy like that. Okay. So now I'm going to go back. I've effectively added the audio track to, because the way this works, and I think with a lot of non-linear video editors is that it's kind of like a stack of paper. So what's ever on top is gonna have that precedence and be on top in the layers, so to speak. Um, I think you can do this by just adding, an, if you can add somehow, once again, in the tutorials and stuff like that, you can just go to help, 
tutorials, you know, those are your friends to get you to places and there's a lot of good information on how to use this program. In the past I've done it and it's no big deal. But uh what I've done here is I've effectively added you can see V2, it's a video track. It's got a video track up here and an audio track down here. It still should work. I don't know if there's an easy way to detach audio. Let's see. Not what we want. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to select this track without. So I guess you want to click right under the title here in the blank area. And that will select it. That should kind of select the whole track. Pick filters, add filter, and then we'll go back down and pick that video spectrum thing again. I'm just going to do it in the search box uh, audio. And then we'll do audio spectrum. And now let's hit play. Chapter 1 and you can see of the Epistle to the down. Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox record. So, there was a way to get this to go. I don't know. There's a way to get it easier to work with to where it fills up that whole area more. So we've got it online. We went ahead and uh, that's only one pixel. Are you kidding me? It's that fat. All LibriVox recordings are in the public. I don't think that's accurate. I think that's probably a lot more pixels than it's domain. Claiming. For more information and to find out how you you can volunteer, please visit. Huh. That doesn't seem to be having the effect. And we can go in, there's a way you can uh, add more colors here and uh, click on each one of these and set them to various colors. Chapter one of the Epistle to the Hebrews, just want to get like American Standard Version. Color and, stuff. and the position is, uh, what is that, 0x and then 360y. Size is 640 by, so we want that to be 1280. Okay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. It's kind of For more information, it looks like it should only be one bar there. We can reverse and mirror the spectrum and do, or you can dink around with all this kind of stuff to uh, get different different values like you can add way more bands and stuff and then to find out how you can volunteer please visit just do a few bands oh. Hebrews, American Standard Version and the audio this is, is a LibriVox recording because... all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain for more information and to find out how you can volunteer please visit I'm not sure whether or not that will, what kind of a glitch that is in Shotcut, like whether or not it will render with the one band or not. But what a good idea to do is save your work at key points, like as soon as you accomplish, like lining up the video like you like it, save your project right there. That way you can just sort of throw everything away and go back and be like, okay, I just want to dink with that audio spectrum filter in case it does get out of sync because that does at least in my experience in the past with this editor and with most of them um, they'll get out of sync pretty easy and just start acting totally goofy so anyway you can uh, take your time and dink around with all this stuff and so the low frequency is going to be like the booms that low rumble sound that saying what are the lowest frequencies you want to pick up the highest the higher frequencies is, you know, the higher frequencies, the whistles and the the S's and stuff like that, whether you want those to register. So if you're wanting to get your spectrum to, like, look a little more precise to the audio or maybe less detail or something, you can dig around with those. The threshold is going to be, like, how loud the sound has to be to actually, like, register and make the, the bands move. Uh, 
what do we have here so anyway I'll just go ahead and remove this filter and oh cool totally got rid of filters there yeah, like I said you get what you pay for here so this is <laughs> I just double clicked the title bar on that and that brought me back here. So I'm going to add another filter. I'll type in audio because it's actually a video filter, but it has audio in the name. And then we'll go to waveform visualization. I think if you double click on that one, let's see here, minus that, add one, audio. Oh man, maybe it's just if I like, yeah, if you do that, then you can see more at one time, but then you get all this stuff in your way here. Okay, there's no way to shrink that over there, so I'm going to hit play and see what it's at for default. Put that back towards the beginning. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Still Hebrews, has that line American Standard there. Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All That's LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. There. So what I will do is I'll do file, save as, and then here we'll just save it as the default uh, project file name. And then I'm going to close this down. And I'm going to reopen it. to that animated folder and there it is that animated MLT file chapter one oh, wow. of the it epistle to the there. Hebrews American Standard Version this is a LibriVox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public okay, so domain somewhere we've added for more that, information and to find out how you can right volunteer here. please visit Click on that little filter icon and see if that brings them up. Audio waveform visualization. Get rid of that. Rewind it. Chapter one. Bizarre. Of the what is that doing there? There's no filter. Is it down here? You know what? I wonder. Sold to the Hebrews. I bet Amer what happened was before I brought this audio up here it was added to that so I'm gonna it's ridiculous detach audio if I get rid of that I totally remove this track and I bet it's still here Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews. Get rid of this so it's not visible. Go back. Chapter 1 of the Epistle no, to the Hebrews. Okay, anyway. Going to select this track. Go to Filters. Add a filter. Video. Audio waveform. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews. Alright, whatever I did that got rid of that glitch finally. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Since it's like a milestone point. And then uh, set that to 1280. Widen that out a few pixels. What am I missing here? Anything? 
Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. Okay, I'm going to remove this filter so that there shouldn't be any filter there. Go back and do that whole same thing over again. It's ridiculous. This is how it goes, though. Output. Does that really not do that? Append to current track. Delete, remove clip. I'm going to try and lift it and see if that works. Lift clip. And click on output and say not do that. Bizarre. I can never record a short pod screencast. Like, it just never freaking happens. Alright, back to the basics. Go... I like this track. Insert track. Come down here. Select this one. Drag it way up there. Okay. I'm going to remove this track. Scroll this back up. And uh, make sure I'm selected on this one. You know what I may have done too is if you click on the actual track and this red bar is around the track, that may have added the filter to that one. Like right here, what's this? Chapter 1. There it is. Of the epistle. That's exactly what it is. So then I got to remove it from there versus because then you can have like partial clips. So it's kind of goofy. Like then if I come back here, I wouldn't have been able to see that added filter. So that's what was going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and add filter. Since I'm selected on this one, it, it should uh, select every single clip. If there was multiple clips, it should effectively add it to all of those. Audio waveform visualization. So we'll make this a few pixels wide. Maybe this one can get away with a little bit thinner. Um, make this the full width. There is only one channel of this particular audio file. If it was stereo, you could uh, do that and it would do stereo. So let's go ahead and add some colors. Just picking random colors. This will probably make it clicky in the preview because it has to render more stuff. But it will look nicer and then in the final deal it shouldn't be clicky. It should be nice and smooth. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings... And then if we go back to our reference image, we can see it kind of lines up roughly with the edge of the text there and with the side of this stuff here. So we can do that. Bring that over roughly right there. I could make this preview window bigger for, for this part if I wanted to. Stretch these down and... I guess that's all it's going to let me do. Ridiculous. All right. Do that. And then I can move it around with that if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and get my real estate back here. What am I missing? The window. 
No, when do I want? Window will just make it look like a. Are in the public domain. Kind of For like more information and in, in the wave editor. Find out how you can volunteer. Please so visit. That's one option. The, I definitely encourage you to experiment with all those and save beforehand. But this way is more like real time. If it's at towards zero milliseconds. It's of the Epistle sort of like to the that. Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. And there's ways to, um, I'm not seeing the other options. I get maybe they're removed, but there used to be other options for changing that deal around. Maybe that's under audio spectrum. So anyway, that right there. For more information is, and to find out how you can volunteer, ballpark, please visit. You get there, right? And what I could do to finish up is I would go to export and from timeline, you can do playlist. It, the cool thing about that playlist I was dragging stuff into over here is that if you just want to real quick piece some chunks of video together, um, watch the tutorials on that but it's a real quick way to do it without fidgeting with that like buggy timeline but anyway since we are using the timeline we want to make sure that the timeline selected I'm gonna to go to configure actually I'm not gonna to go to configure I'm gonna try and figure out what's going on over here so we want to probably do h264 see what the other options are And then there's lossless H.264, which um, would be a really large file, but you wouldn't lose any quality. You'd want to pick something like that if you were going to take it into another editor and do more edits or something. So it looks like... And then I don't really trust their presets, that, but that's supposed to be like a preset for YouTube and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do, I think baseline is the ideal one maybe. And then down here, there's this advanced. And so 1280 by 720, that's what we want, that aspect radio, ratio with the frames per second. MP4 is probably the most compatible. The only one that, other one that I would recommend off of this is the uh, Matroska format. Where is that? Right here, that's the MKV format. Um, not every device might be able to play that. So you probably want to leave it on MP4. And then I probably just leave that all the same unless you want to experiment with it or know better than I do. Then this is the coder decoder. We got lib x264, which is the open source version, free version of the H264 video. Um, I'm just going to leave everything standard. Pretty sure the quality should be fine. And we do have audio. If you want to change the sample rate to 44K for some reason, you can do that. I know mine's mono, so I'm going to pick that. I'll go ahead and pick 44k too. And then the uh, bit rate, 256 is leaning a little bit high. Um, if you want the best quality, sorry the garbage truck's coming through. If you want the best quality, that's probably what you you want to go for something like that or 384. That's going to increase the file size. Um, with spoken word, one track, 128k should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to 192 just usually right around 200 like 192 224 whatever options your editor gives you right in there for spoken word that's usually going to be pretty darn clear so I'll pick that and then other this is where you can add um, if you are familiar with the FFmpeg which is the underlying uh, there's a command line tool for it and stuff if you're familiar with those command lines and you want to add something specific here you can do that so just double check these audios looking good all that stuff's looking good so then we can click that was under the advanced tab now we're going to click export file and then we'll go to that same folder and it will be animated.mp4 save it there this drive only has two gigs of free space do you still want to continue um, I always only have a few gigs of space. If I have tens of gigs, I'll end up filling it up, downloading junk. So as long as, you know, this video is just a few minutes, not even a few minutes. This video is like just over 10 seconds long. Um, we're not using 
uncompressed video. If you're using uncompressed video or you have super long video, then, you know, hours kind of thing, then you got to worry about needing gigabytes of space. But I know that whatever algorithm Shotcut uses to give this warning, it's, I just click yes. It, it always gives me that warning. I'm going to tell it not to. And then over here on the far right, you can see the jobs going. And that's pretty quick. I don't think I've ever rendered a video that quick before. Uh-oh. Failed. Let's open it. Chapter so. 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard. See here. Show and folder. It's there. I wonder if it really failed or if that's just... Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit... Yeah, I can go to properties and see that it's... That looks fine to me. I don't know why it said it failed. Um, we got the H.264 format. We got the 720, but I always like to come in here and double check all these properties. It's going to take that many kilobits a second. Um, we got the 194 mono, 44 stereo. AAC is the standard uh, audio type for um, for the H.264 MP4 videos. So all that looks like it lines up good. The program I'm using here is uh, this Media Player Classic, is what it's called, MPCHC, and 64-bit version that shouldn't really matter but this really honestly is like one of the best video players there is for computers period I think it's only available on Windows to my knowledge so if you're using Windows um, I really don't think you're gonna find forget VLC and all that junk this thing is what's up and other than this I usually do most of my testing and stuff in this player it's fast it plays every format it really just is so precise and accurate um but that being said sometimes it will play stuff that has trouble rendering in a particular browser so i'd recommend at least one browser playing it in preferably two like use chrome chromium and firefox or whatever if you can to test it out and make sure they that the video will play in there okay there are other filters too that you could apply to this so I can go back over here to the filters um, select on this guy get rid of the audio waveform and I'm gonna add try real quick let's see if it really got rid of that chapter one of the epistle to the Hebrews America what did it add it here to There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Chapter one okay. of the epistle to, to the Hebrews. I just pause it. I guess it, it probably had like a little buffer where it had saved the old one without re-rendering it. So anyway, go to the audio uh, spectrum. I guess that must be what it is. Since we don't really need that box, I'm going to try and steal that screen real estate there. And then we probably only need just enough to grab all that stuff. Okay. So I'm going to have to keep re-punching that in. And then mirror, reverse. Yeah, this one has a lot more options. Okay, type line. This is what I was looking for, bar. This is going to make it a lot more closer to this specific style that Christo and the future we're using here. Um, let's go ahead and... Is it going to work yet? Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American starting, Standard Version. We're starting to get there. This one you definitely need to bump up the pixels. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews. And that's just a matter of style, matter of taste there, of what you want. 
Um, then we can do mirror the spectrum. Hebrews, American Standard Version. Closer to Christos. This is a LibriVox recording. All. And then let's fill the area under the spectrum. LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. I think that's for maybe a different style. And then we can reverse it if you want to for some reason. For more information and to find out. I noticed if you play around with it, especially if you're using the bands and stuff, um, you know, doing the reverse the spectrum, and maybe if you want to add like a speaker icon over here, and then like slide that over. Oh yeah, we gotta do that anyway, just to be more precise. But yeah, if you did like, instead of the bars, you did the lines. How you can volunteer, please visit and then one of the ideas is you could pit, you know, you could slide this over even more and pit us just like a static speaker image, like a public domain speaker or something, you know, like one of these kind of speakers. And then it would look like the sound waves are coming out of that speaker. But anyway, let's see here, what do we need? American stand. Not that. Put that on bar. So that we get that chapter effect. one of the, and then we can change some colors. It looks like not quite the same exact uh, filter that he's using. I'm sure he's probably using like an Adobe product or something. Um, but we'll go ahead and add like three colors. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox... And then we can bring that down. About right there. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, See, please visit... He had. he had a lot of bands, so we could bump that up to like 61. Sold to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out and how you can volunteer, please visit... You can experiment with that. American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public. And then maybe since if we notice public like domain. over here, For more there's information not much and going to find on out because how you there's can not that low frequencies please visit. And over here. There's not that many high frequencies. So what we can do is bring up the lows and bring down the highs. And that should get it to where most of the waveform. Chapter one of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public hmm. domain. So 20. For more information and... That's kind of weird. Maybe I have too many uh, bands on here. Let's shrink that back down and do... To find out how you can volunteer. Put this back down like that. Please visit... So it likes its lows. 20. Should be able to get away with a little bit. I'll change this manually. So uh, 20 is very low. We'll say like 40. And then that should be fine. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. Okay, it looks like we can close them in just a little bit more. So I'll take that down to like 15, and this can go to like 44 or something. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard. Okay, I'm going to take this one down just a little bit more, and I'm going to add some more bars to it. Reset it. Chapter 1 of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All okay. LibriVox recordings. So then we'll go ahead and just export this one. I'm going to. Can't really deselect all, so. 
Let's go to export. Double check the settings real quick. Looks like it preserved. I don't the settings. I'll go to file, save everything, and then oh, there's a reset button if you want to if you screw up the settings, experimenting too much. So that's advanced. Then export file, and then there we are. We'll save it as animated 2.mp4. We should be able to. We'll just let that run. No need to see the whole thing. We can see the percentage. Looks like it's only going to take about 20 seconds on my five-year-old, six-year-old computer. And fails. I've never had it fail on an, an export like that before, so that's kind of funny. There's part two. Chapter one of the Epistle to the Hebrews, American Standard Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit. So anyway, that's that. And then what you would do, you of course want to probably spend more time with it and make it look nicer, is you go to your home tab on LinkedIn. You'd start a post. And then you could just click add the video right there. Um, you might even just be able to click that video right there. But anyway, I don't want to do that. And then from there, I mean, you could add your text across the top and, you know, just do everything you want to do to make it look similar. And that is that. Sorry it took so long. Thanks a lot for checking all that out.